Okay, this is kind of a quick overview of a day in the life of resin 3D printing. There's going to be a series of videos coming up that were all shot yesterday. And I'm not going to complete my tests. If you watch all those videos, you'll know what I'm talking about. Because there is an odor involved in 3D printing. And because it's still winter, I had to do these very first tests. This is day one of resin printing. Or day in the life of resin printing in the house. Now the smell from the resin isn't as strong. You don't walk in the room and it knocks you over or anything like that. It's a low level smell but it is persistent so you do get sick of it. And uh, I did shoot this in the kitchen. Well it's the only room big enough where I could set something up on the counter but it also is a room that has a vent fan um, so I figured I could vent out the stink. But if you watch the video, you'll see some of the problems that I had, some of the successes I had. The uh, Sonic Mini 8K does print, does print well, but it does crush the first few layers. Um, they're not to scale. Something that should have been 12 millimeters tall is 11 because the bottom first few layers are compacted. I was trying different tests to cure that, like rafts and supports. And I had one more thing I wanted to try, but I ran out of time yesterday because each test takes X amount of time to run. And I decided I wasn't going to smell the house up again for a second day. So it's just going to have to wait until warm weather reaches us and I move all this stuff out to the shop where I can do it in a bigger ventilated area where it can stink all at once and it won't make any difference. But... Um, the curing station, the anti-curing station worked great. The cleaning station worked great. Um, you'll see when you watch the videos that I added a removable magnetic flex panel to this. I'm, think, I'm gonna, thinking I'm going to take that off because uh, I had two failures during some of my tests where parts did not adhere. The first time I ran it, everything adhered fine. By the second time, they weren't. And yeah, I tried scuffing it up and everything else. That didn't help. So, I think I'll take all that stuff off and just go back to the bare build plate in the summer when it's warm. Because the biggest complaint I see on YouTube is people saying that the parts adhere too well. Well, too well would be a lot better than having them fail and end up in the resin vat and then having to clean all that out every time. So, I was just going to say, when you watch the videos, I explain what I'm doing. I did everything, I think, correctly. To minimize the smell, the only thing I didn't do initially is anytime you have anything, whether it's a paper towel, a rubber glove, anything that you're going to dispose of later, seal that up in another container, whether it's a plastic container or a plastic bag, don't just throw it in the garbage. See, initially I made the mistake of uh, throwing a paper filter in the garbage and I believe a, a pair of my plastic gloves. These are the really expensive, but like plastic bag type plastic gloves. The problem with that is uh, the garbage in the house now stinks. Even after I rethought it later and dug them back out of the garbage and sealed them up appropriately, it's too late. They'd already been in the garbage, so now the garbage is going to stink for another five days until it's garbage day. But um, I think that's about it. Keep in mind the odor. If you're doing it in the house, you really need a sealed room that's vented and not an open area and don't ever dispose of anything just into the garbage it's gonna stink you're gonna need to seal it up after that I just say watch the videos you'll see what I was learning and testing and doing um, right up to the point where I decided I'm gonna have to wait for warmer weather and do it out in the shop so I don't make the place stink all the time so there you go